Yo, what is up folks, Travis G here, and today we're taking a look at a pretty sweet and spicy timeless deck that is Black Green and Bolas of Cerdal. Uh, if any of you are familiar with my Explorer videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of this card and it is great in the timeless format as well, despite costing a pretty expensive 6 mana. 3 black black legendary artifacts. Look at the top card of your library any time, play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value. And then tap, sacrifice 10 non land permanents, each opponent loses 10 life okay we have our acceleration first let's start there because we need to get to six mana we have four copies of dark ritual um a couple of these will get to your bolus citadel on turn two but hey three mana accelerate is uh pretty good you can get bolus citadel on pretty quickly we also have the death right shaman we've got a bunch of fetches in our mana base and we have delighted halfling halfling in particular has a very important clause here Tap, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be counted. And that does, in fact, include Bolus's Citadel. So we can make a Bolus's Citadel that can't be counted. Pretty good, pretty good. So we've got two, like, creature mana accelerators, and we've got Dark Ritual as well. Dark Ritual, we have Necropotence, which serves an additional role in this deck, because not only, like, you can, like, a Dark Ritual, Necropotence in turn one, draw a bunch of cards back up, look for acceleration, more Dark Rituals, look for Citadel. But Necropotence, once you have a Citadel in play, is a way to reset the top of your library. Super important. But the Citadel lets you cast spells on the top of your library, and lets you play lands, but you can only play a land if it's actually, like, you have a land drop for it. Otherwise, it's stuck on top. Being able to reset the top of our library, either to, like, hey, make sure you've got the right life top to cast a spell, whatever, is really, really important. So Necropotence is one thing that lets you do that, as well as being, like, an amazing, just incredible, brilliant card by itself. And if, uh, we'll just skip around the creatures then, because the other effect that we use to manipulate the top of our library is Woe Strider. Uh, this is what we use in Explorer and Pioneer as well. Um, but 3 and a black, 3, 2, and to the battlefield you make a goat. Simply sacrifice another creature, scry 1. And so as long as you've got a creature in play, you can reset the top of your library, put something on the bottom you don't want to, look for your tendrils, look for your weather storms, look for whatever you need. This way, of course, does not cost you life, but does require to have creatures in play. And so we are actually playing, like, we are, like, a creature deck, despite having, like, Dark Ritual, things like that. We've got the Delighted Halfling, we've got the Deathrite Shaman, and then we have the, kind of, like, two-part combo of Orcish Bow Masters, just an incredible card anyway, and then Priest of the Forgotten Gods, which does two things. It allows us to interact with opponent's creatures. It, obviously, and Bow Masters. Bow Masters is two creatures. You can sacrifice both, both to Forgotten the Gods, and, hey, opponent loses some life, sacrifices a creature. Importantly, adds black, black, and draw a card, which means the Priest of the Forgotten Gods is actually a Manic as well. You go turn one, Manic Accelerator, turn two, Priest, and all of a sudden you're threatening to go like turn two. You get to tap this for mana, maybe you have another one drop in play, immediately sacrifice it as well, and you, all of a sudden you're kind of off to the races, you're getting to a six mana. Pretty cool, pretty cool. As well as being like, hey, creature interaction and like card advantage. Nice. Uh, Bone Masters makes you creatures. Woe Strider also makes you creatures. We'll have some things lying around for this. And when you're kind of going off, um, obviously you're going to be playing creatures off your library. We then have a bunch of tutor effects. We have our one of Demonic Tutor. Search your library for a card, put that into your hand, then shuffle. You can use this to find Bolas of Citadel. You can actually use this to find Dark Ritual, which almost might be more common just to get you the mana for this. Um, importantly, hey, it's limited to one. You can play it. So we have one Demonic Tutor, and I mean, black green, we also get Assemble the Team. Black, green, sorcery, so it's your, the top third of your library rounded up for a card, put it into your hand. It's a bit like a Demonic Tutor. We're playing like four copies of Citadel, four copies of Tendrils, four copies of Dark Ritual. It just finds the pieces you're missing. Um, to set up for basically like a turn three Citadel and kill. Ideally, you're winning the game the time you cast a Citadel. That's, that's the game plan. That's the game plan. And then our actual, like, how are we killing our opponent? We have four copies of Tendrils of Agony, which target player loses two life, you gain two life with Storm. We're planning on casting a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of spells. The gain life effect also means that you can refuel your life total for Citadel. And then we also have kind of additionally kind of like powering both of Citadel. Three copies of Weather the Storm. Simply you gain three life with Storm Count. Hey, you're going off casting spells with both of Citadel. All right, cool. Your life total's getting low. We'll Weather the Storm. Gain a bunch of life back up. Um, just actual tons. And it's also like, hey, sometimes can be helpful versus some of the aggro decks in the format as well. As this is an instant, you can cast on your opponent's turn, you get the storm effect, they cast some spells. Lots of decks trying to do things like Mishra's Bauble, they might cast like three or four spells on turn, just like, oh hey, I'll just gain 12 by a bunch of time. But when you're going off with Citadel, this gets you just... What, your life total is a massive resource, is, is, is your resource, and so just resets everything and uh, lets you carry on casting spells, looking for tendrils. Tendrils for your opponent's life total. Alright, the mana base, um, kind of fairly straightforward. We've got 11 fetches here. 
uh, alongside a forest and two swamps. Ideally, you're only fetching the forest if you think you're playing against Blood Moon. We only have four green fetches anyway, but obviously, both said I'll just cast black, 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 black. Wait, no, black, black, black. Sorry. Uh, you then have two overgrown tombs, and then, yeah, forest, two swamps. Uh, we have Besaidu, getting rid of troublesome things, and also a Frexian Tower, which is kind of like a bit of a free roll. Sacrifice creature at black, black. We've got creatures lying around. We've got accelerators. Once you've used a tap for mana, you can then also, like, hey, Pop it here, get that extra boost towards six mana for Citadel. All right, pretty solid shell. We'll be taking this into some best of one ranked matches. If you're not ready, please subscribe to the channel. and try and keep bringing sweet stuff in timeless as well as the other couple, couple of formats I cover. Um, and yeah, let's get into some ranks. All right, first match with timeless Golgari Citadel. We have a Citadel, we have double death right, we have a priest, and we have Phyrexian Tower. Uh, I've not done the entire math, I'll be honest with you. But I think it's good. It depends. Actually, if I find someone in black, it's less good. Obviously, if you have that just for death, right, it's much better. <laughs> but we'll see. You gotta imagine this snaps off a citadel, but if they're threatened by our creatures, because hey, we can kill creatures. It's not impossible. If death right's not like selling land, they can access into the sorceries. Okay, interesting. So now these are offline, right? Our next turn is likely we're going to be playing two more mana creatures. I think... Uh, well, it's still silly not just to get the most mana in play. And put the one most mana. Okay. Bear in mind that when you're not casting my Drew Scroll, Halfling does tap for colorless. Which isn't ideal. But the upside here is pretty huge. Again, one mana accelerant. I don't care about it at all. It's getting pushed. Fair enough. Okay, we hit a fetch, which is awesome. I don't see any uh, red mana in our future. I'm just going to go ahead and crack this for a swamp. We'll play out both our death rates. You know we have a still 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 Oh, maybe they have, um... Hmm. Maybe they're like, oh, it's six mana. And they give us a bunch of time. Or maybe they have a second hand description spell that will catch this. See here. Oh, ritual's good, though. Um... Hey, that's enough mana. One way or another. Alright. I'm just thinking if we want a Frexian's Tower here. Because we can either um, play the over into and tap and do this. It's on. Uh, in fact, we can just do this for colorless. That seems fine. Don't need to sacrifice the death right. Okay, we're at 17. Let's see. Halfling. We do not, unfortunately, have a way to uh, reset the file library currently. So we're actually stuck here. But we do have a set and play. So, that green, they might be able to remove. I'll make the attack in. Probably a sloppy attack, given we could have like Bone Master, but I don't know. What if it was a nice one as well? Because the land drop also resets the top of our library. So if we hadn't played a land drop, um, and like for example, we'd be able to add to the end of the Death Rite Shaman, then we'd be able to play this as a land for the turn, carry on going, and then if the top card is a land, we can then shuffle it away, which is nice. Liliana, they know we have an overrun team. I don't know whether they'll tick up or tick down here. I imagine they'll just make a sacrifice of Death Rite, but. Who actually knows? <clears throat> Without a way to reset your top of your library, it's not. It's but it's, it's not a perfect concrete combo. Okay, so there's. All right. <clears throat> Let's reset the top of our library again. We'll find a swamp here. We have no more fetchable lands. Um. Sure. Let's assemble the team. Let's search the top third of our library. We can find a citadel, which is a great. Well, the best thing to find really is a way to reset the top of our library, rather than go to your potentials. Uh, it's not actually casting spells yet. And because our lifestyle is more valuable, I think we'd rather have the Roy Strider than the Necropones. Okay. I will cast the Roy Strider first. We are going to want it in play, and then we can tendrils for higher number. Got a couple of copies here. 
nice. Uh, yeah, we'll Bowmaster's face them, and then we can tendrils off the top here. More of a win. If we didn't, if we didn't hit it, though, we've got a bunch of like scries with the Woe Strider to find relevant spells. Nice. All right, all right. All right, second match there. Yeah, opponent maybe didn't respect that we could draw into Dark Ritual. Unfortunately, they didn't see it in our opening hand, and so uh, we're not aware of the doom that was coming. Um, opponent on the play. This looks okay, but not super fast. Bone Masters give us some interaction. We've got what if they also find a green source if we need one. If they don't do anything quickly, we can look to priest into Bone Masters. Find, find stuff. We've got Necro coming down there. Let's see, let's see. Delta. Come on, Ragman. No, oh, Ragman's like badly punishing. Okay, bringing pool. Alright, Elvish Mystic. It'd be like Intruder Alarm Elves. I'm not seeing tons of that, to be honest. Um, nah, let's start on the Wooded Fitness. Fetch it over in the team. We're not going to get Blood Moon here, I don't think. Oh, I hate this. Um. Oh, it gets stifled and we're so unhappy. I think we should still do it now. We're not getting mystic into trick blinded, surely. Alright. That would be sweet, though. That would be sweet. Evergreen team. Uh, we'll save this fetch to look for stuff later. Um, I want to do this on that upkeep. See if I use mana. Basically force them to use mana on their turn and not on our turn. I'm going to play green, but this will disappear after. Time window to kill a mana guy. Let's see what they're actually up to then. Growth Spiral. Alright. Well, they didn't grow spiral on our turn. They've not drawn the turn yet. So it's kind of wild. Let's see. Untap Tower Fountain. We're going to counter this. Is that where we're headed? Yeah, sure. Pretty fine with this. We get to like untap. Well, they have a land drop. Uh, that tower's interesting. We don't want to play it yet. I'm still kind of wanting to hold this. Actually, I should probably play this. Then I'll put a load of pressure on. And uh, the Overgrown Team Lord deck is a liability. We only have one more fetchable land. Given how they've responded with the Elvish Mystic, I don't want to just make priest. But going, it's like we're passing up the opportunity to necro here. How badly is that gonna? If in doubt, stand the most powerful card you can, and we'll go ahead and draw to the top of this. Yeah. Oh, we know we don't need to fetch the blood. But, okay, wow it. Now my coast, they can just slam Teferi here. It looks like they're on some kind of, like, Bant Nexus plan. Given that, actually, given they have my coast, maybe even, uh, Bant Field. It tends just to gain some life back. So... Voice Rider? Hmm. I'll play this. This is a little bit weird. Fine. Obviously, the more life we use now, like the less we'll be able to use this now. But ideally, we get to gain some of it. So, doing the priest of the god. Uh, sorry, getting the priest of the god into play first. 
means that we can immediately activate it if we get this voice right into play next turn. See what our opponent's up to. They've got four cards in hand and have done not very much. The tendrils. Assemble is nice. Alright. To try and find the tendril. Or, like, hey, they're on 50. Or, this makes them lose two life if they don't. Okay. Natural order for a tractor. That's what it could be. I don't think there's anything better than Zagreus. Yeah. So, a tractor is annoying, for sure. Um, though, if they can't deal with the priest, we do just get to kill it for free. Let's see what they actually hit. Uh, yeah, we don't get to look at the cards. Oh, we do get to look at the cards. They hit binding, but this, this is not a free binding. They hit three mana binding. Two mana. Yeah, three mana. Right, is interesting. There's some so oh, I've been really meaning to um, try out some solar flare stuff. Like, uh, or dre or, or also like dredge or like a reanimator package with a burial rights. If that's something that interests you, let me know. I need to put, do some experimenting. I've got some, in some interesting decks queued up, should we say. Okay, so given all that, they actually don't have. Oh, okay, we need to do some maths here. Because I don't want to dump voice right of it, right? If Uro binding on Barry, the Barry right to be able to pick this back up, which is we're trying to find a kill basically. Um, if we go assemble first, oh. Okay. Oh, they have sword. Oh, that's bad. Let's pitch this for black. They did cast a spell, though. That's unfortunate because this now doesn't really. Um, we can go assemble into dark ritual. It doesn't hit tendrils, right? Assemble ritual. Let's assemble, actually. Still. On Citadel. Next time we can play Citadel. Maybe. Alright, wait Alright. They're tapping with a bunch of interaction. Yeah, we need to... I was like, they didn't reveal... I was like, they didn't reveal Source of Plowshares. I think we're okay. The yeah, swords changes everything because um, killing this takes us off a card and also but it takes off a card, killing the tracks out. Anti black magic. It should have opened up the assembled dark ritual tendrils. Now they're going to be on a really high light soul. but maybe we can come back. Maybe. That seems sweet. I've been, uh, I have, I have a natural order bant list saved actually. No, no bant for any, any old school legacy aficionados. What else they got? What else they got? Got a war? Yeah, they're definitely playing like some field stuff. This land doesn't fetch anything, but I don't know that. Uh, we have Phyrexian Tower. Uh, we haven't seen a counter spell, but we know that they have a late line. Binding. We force them to use late line mine. I don't think we can do We get priority when we cast, um, that out line. You also have three life. Oh, sorry, do you not expect this to result? I think. They have a spell pierce. 
I'm not gonna. All right. Yeah, the whole part is I'm not gonna answer this three times. All right. Okay. Okay. Next match. Next match. That's close. All right. That match. A little bit that. We have dark red necropotence here. We don't have a green source. And we have the halfling. Um, I'm gonna keep this. It's kind of hard to send it down a hand with these two cards. I'm like leading into some stuff. I think we'll just hit a green source. Oh, we're going to be tapped as well. Oh, okay. So given that, this isn't legendary, of course. Um. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Um. Nah. Okay. Don't think. Don't don't even think about it. We should have necro some cards, though. The opponent has, like, what looks to be, like, not putting a ton of pressure on us very quickly. We have Assemble to find the Citadel now. And then, hey, we've got Halfling, Priest, Boy Strider. In case of getting these cards into play. And whether our opponent less. Uh, I could also see some hand disruption come across, but... Dark Ritual on... This is ominous. So I think just make it. Um, make priest or cast assemble. I think we need to get priest. Getting the the halfling down seems like a really good idea, but. Wanting to be like mana efficiency, find everything right now. And it's only tapped for cards. We go to priest here, next time we can go. We go halfway here, next time we can go. What's the same? This is the most upside, I think. Ah, in fact. Well. Ah. We just got channel for the mog. What are we channeling for? Realm Breaker. Okay. What else do we have? Oh. I see. Yeah. Any number of prayers cards fill onto the battlefield. I don't Urobras exists. Oh, they just have all of them. Uh, yeah, Urobras gets them all haste, we die. <laughs> what just happened? I wasn't ready for that. Okay, that is so sweet. All right, all right, nice. Yeah, every time I queue up matches in this format, I'm like, oh, there's this thing I didn't know existed. Uh, but yeah, oops or prayers. That one's a new one to me. Oh, this is such a powerful hand, but it folds to a couple of different things. I think we've got to keep it. We got a double dark ritual with a death right start. Um, into something. Who knows. We can go like death right into assemble, try and hit Citadel, and then if we hit a land, we can get that. Of course, on the draw. Um, so, hey, let's see what's up. Yeah, <laughs> oops, I was not ready for that. I guess that is why, or part of the reason why channel and demonic two are banned. But there are, I was ready for the channel Ulamog just lose my lands or something. Not the, not the, um, there it is. That is sick. That is sweet. Yeah, the part that keeps six. Um, oh no. Oh, it's a tap land at least. Okay. Leyline in play. Uh, so Leyline. Leyline turns off tendrils of the wind card. Right. Um. There are other ways. In which, there are other ways in which we can win the game. Uh, this to say each opponent. Now let's start on the death right. Halfling later on. The tendrils does target. I believe that Priest of the Forgotten Guards does target. It might be we end up in a position where we have a big board but cannot in fact um Yeah, I think maybe just because we're gonna have to win through this like through Leyline Sensei anyway. Let me just like play like we have to win through it and play like I'm gonna have to play through creatures. It still looks all like graveyard. Alright. 
We still do some powerful stuff. Um, but it depends how they're going to interact and kill us. Let's slow this down. Fairy does slow it down. Uh, I assume that they're on like the some kind of lockout deck. I'll go ahead and I don't really want it to set around and play. The um I can't remember what these set of enchantments are called. Oh we've got Necro as well. Necro guarantee should guarantee the hand drop. I just fire off both rituals. They're not tendrils thing. Oh, what? Oh, you're not ready. I'm gonna put these into play. I'm just gonna put some creatures. Alright. It also be a kind of blue white control deck. This is nice. Um, I think we need demonic you for land. I'm pretty sure priest targets. Go to. We have a fetch. I want to use it. I kind of want to see what they do before we can. We should find a second land. This one. I'm gonna just find a verdict. Good deep. Um, I've seen versions of this deck that plays the other cuts right. It starts becoming quite a lot of creatures and like trying to get the right balance of slots when you want to play. Necro, Tendrils, stuff is pretty. Okay, they appear to be stuck on land. Um, Priest, in fact, does target, <laughs> um, unfortunately. So, we're not going to have colored mana to be. Uh, right. It's like the most awkward game possible. We could, we could even play an answer here. Um, or. One of these two. We can even play an answer in the deck somewhere for an arm patch enchantment. Oh, in fact, we do. We have a Sage to draw to. Um, okay, that maybe changes things. Sure. I guess memory lapse, but they're on 10. They're not. Uh, we can also put this on the bottom, but I think I'm fine with drawing it. The Sage. We spent a lot of resources here. One ring, okay. Fine. This is um loss of life. I'm gonna scry the Alright, try and find a land. I'll only scry the priest. It in fact yeah, land drop. Okay. Um, what do you mean damage here? I think we should just roll. Let's have a look what we actually want to do. Um, we could just tutor for Sage to be set, but it doesn't even unlock that. There's no reason for us to have another green. Andrews is offline. Bow masters and or actually shoot for and stuff. Till we get the sage. Uh and we can't necro because we've not got a land on our radio. No, we do. It just doesn't say it's cast. Go ahead and do that. That's necro then, and then we can look for Sage after we see what we draw. If we still need to. So it's a draw, they're gonna go nine. They're gonna pay four life in of this.
So we Echo Citadel Swamp. We found the Besiege naturally. Okay. That's a pretty big deal. They find like another ring. They find any lock pieces. Yeah, I assume that they're playing like nine lives um solidarity or something like that. Okay, they're gonna commit our necro. Deal. Okay. They have a land as well. Um one, two, three. And we have a fetch. And we're gonna discard a besage. Legendary. This doesn't get cheap. Uh, so this. Well, black, black, this. Well, it's a ritual for next. Sort out ritual for next turn. I don't think we got a good chance. We have tendrils. Sage, black man. There it is. I feel like it has to be. I don't know what the, if they've got like a one mana spell. Oh, actually, finding that kind of. Alright, exiling this for the fight. Dark Rage. Andrew. Okay, we found it. That was more complicated than I thought it would be. <laughs> Alright, that's a kind of sweet win. Nice. I love that. All right, one match for the road. Yeah, that was sweet to find a win through that. I was uh, getting pretty worried. This hand is, you got priests into bow masters with like Citadel following. Um, we do have a few green sources, which is a bit awkward, but I think that would keep. Priest providing triple black is, or well, providing two of the black we need. Pretty nice. Um, not super fast, for sure. But uh, the, the priest and the bow masters both kind of doubling his interaction. Might save a skin a little bit. Wooden Green Grave? I mean, we should have fed. Nothing following. Be a bit more careful about Stifle. Not being got here, but like, if they're like fetching, they shouldn't be playing Stifle. But like, the way to. The way to. Ooh, go. Um. Okay. I'm just going to try and crash the priest here. But it's a thing that gets fatal push, so that's totally fine. The upside is like, bow masters and... Fading Hope. The interesting one. I don't know what they're playing. Something probably pretty slow. I was going to say something pretty slow, they've just gone Dark Ritual. Rusko, what does this do? It's about a field, Conjure card in Midnight Clock. When you cast it on a creature spell, when our card switch permanent, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. All right, now we have a second weather this time. Um, we are a mana off being able to drop the uh, there it is. Hot and trap. Yeah, that's fine. Let's remake the priest. When have you cast on creatures? This is like a pseudo storm shenanigans type stuff. 
I've not seen Rusko before. This is my alchemy. There's a bunch of alchemy cards I don't know. The black green tier thing. Fortunate. Aware. If we draw a land, we have uh, we have a set out. But if not, then things are getting more dicey. Uh, we do draw a land. They can also count the set out. Um, which is a real possibility. Um, but we are somewhat committed. Yeah. I would like a bonus. I have got a bonus. Alright, let's make black. Oh, they have an answer for the Citadel? Oh, that's nasty. Okay. I'm just going to play this too. We actually know we're not getting... Oh, that's super tough. Alright. Okay, let's see. This is when we cast... Then each opponent loses. This gives them seven cards. Give them a turn. Um... Final block. I was just time warp. All right. Yeah, they could be on like time warp next to fate and stuff. New Rusko. Oh, it makes a second clock. Right. Oh, they know so much. Um. I guess I hold with the storm for. That. So weird. Yeah, so death rate's mana at least. It means we have one mana off again. Um we can now do this. I'm gonna give them a bunch of cards. The problem. Everything was looking pretty good-ish. Oh they did just draw a bunch of cards. Um Let's kill this thing. Two three I forgot that would also happen. And the seventh. They have a Bowmasters. Um, okay. Which will kill our Bowmasters, but our trigger still resolve. Brainstorm. And we are on five. Oh, oh these fizzle. Um, oh, these ones, sorry. But do the other one. Yeah, they do. My castle. Get a bunch of life. Alright, we're back we're up again. Uh, uh, we draw a swamp, we still have a set out. Oh damn, the bounce of the count's gone now, surely. Hmm. Instead of it in your action. New ritual strands. New new ritual strands. Six. Oh no. In a bow math. <laughs> I could have, I could have waited. Let me try to see if I get extra life there. But, uh, 
No dreads. Okay. I mean. Let's see. Oh wait, it's drop seven cards. Oh, they've got two minutes stuff. Oh, it shuffles as well, right? Oh, they get a bunch of life. That's not nice. I think that should be pretty game over. Um. Go. This way we don't get the scry off of it. And we're on 27, but they should be able to kill. They're gaining a bunch of life off of and they'll be able to trigger clock with it again. That kid's super super sweet. I've not seen Rusko before. Fair enough, fair enough. Just keep redrawing. Also, it shuffles back all the time warps. Time warps one of the... <laughs> Actually, they, they don't print extra strand spells like it's the graveyard anymore, but time warp is one. I've not seen an access, so maybe they're just not playing any. Really, really cool deck though. Um, I'm gonna put this up. Yeah, oh, dad's also. We'll see you in the post match kind of wrap up. Okay, I think we actually went 2 3 in the end, but definitely some of the sweetest like matches of time as I've played. That blue bad that we've seen, I just haven't seen anything like that before. Uh, I didn't even know like that. Like, um, Rusko, uh, the clock card, that is really, really sweet. Might have to mess around with that. Find some wild cards to craft it. And also the 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 pray the like oops all praetors like realm tree deck there that we got we got absolutely annihilated by just getting uh GT for channeled. Again, really really sick. I think this deck is really really sweet. There are a few things to like chop and change around that you could kind of like tweak a bit. The numbers here with like the priest and the voice riders. Priest is a bit slow for the format maybe. Maybe playing another one drop as Elerant would be good. Goose is pretty nice. One thing I thought about trying was Goose and then playing some number. <clears throat> Because then you have some more permanent sacrifice to try some number of Beseech, uh, Beseech the Multiverse. That was something I was like, hmm, that could be pretty sweet. Beseech you for Tendrils is not gonna, is, is very rarely gonna get you there, but like it can find you like a missing piece somewhere along the line, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but there's some other things you can do as well. Um, you can even, because you've got like a bunch of tutor effects, like playing like, oh, I've got a removal spot to tutor for. Um, playing, like we have the Besagey, which I'd forgotten about, but fortunately remembered. Um, and that's a nice one because it lets you have like an, uh, an answer to your problematic artifacts and enchantments in the main deck without really sacrificing any of your like density of natural spells. Yeah. And then I think, I still think like Voice Rider and Necro Prodence do sets up your libraries really good. Maybe change the priests out with something a bit different. Bowmaster is obviously just a spell card in the format. And then like, I'm not sure like the numbers and like weather the storm and that kind of stuff. Got a bunch of different tutor effects for the Bolas of Citadel. I think the deck's like really, really solid. The other thing was obviously we got ley lined off there. Maybe some other alternate win condition. You just have like a Zillip like you can even just play like Zillipot Cutthroat here. Um or some other things like that. Or a couple of copies of it to kind of like make the Yeah, there's some interesting options. The deck is really, really sweet. Would definitely recommend it if you've got the pieces lying around. There are some like obscure things, like whether the storm you're not gonna really use very often. Um, but a lot of the cards are either like pretty good in Pioneer Explorer. If you're interested in that stuff, then I have a bunch of different videos on Citadel, which I think is a really, really good deck in the format. Um, if not like tier one, uh, it's definitely like you can definitely compete and do really, really well. And I've got a bunch of other sweet timeless stuff coming uh, out as well. Some really, really cool things. So please do, if you enjoy the video, like, subscribe, uh, and do share it around. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace out.